Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we just had the news drop in content creator chat. The new Fragment Collector is out. I'm going to go through all of the details, all of his kit, um, when he's going live, all of that good stuff. But I've got to say, looking at him just like straight up, it feels like Pixneal has a contender at last. She has waited over 12 months to have a contender for worst Fragment or Fusion ever. And this dude comes right up there and says, Pixnil, take a bow. I'm taking over, in my opinion. Uh, we've just come from Totora, who honestly is, is one of the best fusions we've had for a long time. Really great champion, loads of versatility, really great legendary champion. And he was pretty tough to get. No, was he? No, actually, he was, he was not that tough to get, actually. He was reasonable to get, but he probably cost you a fair amount of your resources. If you are starved of resources right now, then it's like, whew, don't worry. You can take a breather. Because from, in my opinion, this dude sucks. Um, anyway, let's get into his kit. So firstly, the thing which Raid never get wrong. Yeah, this is what they excel at. And you know what? He looks badass. He looks badass. Yeah, of course he does. Raid are exceptionally good at this part of their game. They know their audience. They know, um, you know, they know why people keep coming back. And this is it. They've done an absolute outstanding job. Art team, well done. Um, team that came up with the kit. Damn, what were you smoking over Christmas is what I'm going to say to this. So this is a barbarian. He is cool. Let me just make sure I get this right. A Pardin clan father. Um, he's a barbarian legendary HP based champion. So actually an HP based is nice. We do like... Uh, champions which naturally keep themselves alive defense or hp base generally are much easier to kind of pop into your team and not be taken down um and he is magic affinity so all of that stuff is fine i'm going to read firstly what um what the guys at plarium tell us about this champion and then i'm going to give you my opinion so a pardon clan father should become a great addition to the barbarian faction that lacks hp stroke support champions he has got a continuous heal buff in the steel set that will keep your team alive and might have some synergy with other champions with this buff. Also, a Pardin's passive skill will boost an ally's turn meter each time that he gets healed or that they get healed by continuous heal buff. Um, that's all they got to say about him. And uh, let's just, just look at the faction quickly. An HP-based... Legendary, so HP based, yeah. So we've got one in a Serga. That's the only one. Um, and in terms of kind of like that, that support function, well, Seal is definitely a support function type of champ. Um, you could argue that Valk is as well, honestly. Rorik, I would argue, is more of a support function with his stunnage uh, rather than a you know a damage dealer. A Serga support, but yeah, and to to Hanarak support, I, I think they've actually got a pretty good you know sprinkling of support in their team but they definitely could do another legendary that makes some sense you know they don't they're not like massively packed out with legendaries albeit when when i've been on the free to play this is the first faction i completed because you get seal at 180 days you get high cartoon at 30 days and honestly once you've got those two you just kind of fill in the gaps with you know a few other champions in the mix and this faction is probably the easiest faction to clear maybe with the exception of high elves um so anyway anyway let's get into his kit let's get into why i think it's pretty weak so a1 paired hammers um got his double hammers going off here this is gonna this is gonna make you laugh i think attacks one enemy two times double hitter okay finite we've got a little bit of utility for finite each hit a 50% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 5% and a 50% chance of filling this champion's turn meter by 5%. Now, <laughs> when you get to level 21 to 25 dungeons or when you're talking about um, hard doom tower, all of these mechanics are halved. So it's actually going to be a 2.5% um, turn meter decrease and looking at it here i mean this is a 50 percent chance to land it probably books maybe to 75 percent. i don't see that info 
But it's not even guaranteed. Let me let me just take you to a friend of ours who's been in the game forever. Um, am I in the right faction? I always get this one wrong. He's in here. Let me take you to a little fella who looks at, uh, what's his name? A pardon clan father and says, is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? Yeah. I'm going to do it six times better than you, my friend. This uncommon champion who's, who's also easy to keep alive. He literally looks at him and he's like, what are you on about? 5%. Go and see Pixneal at the crap table. Um, so anyway, it doesn't feel strong to me, this A1. A2, AoE ability. This is not a bad A2. Heals all allies. So firstly, we don't know how much damage it's going to do. It might smack. HP-based champions, it's harder to make them smack because um, you don't have like an increased HP buff. So you get increased attack, you get increased defense, you don't get increased HP. So unless it's got insane multipliers, it's very rare to get an HP-based champion that absolutely smacks. Yeah, we've got a few in the game. Normally when they've got some sort of weird uh, nuance to their skill where there's a double hit um, effect and the second part of the hit hits really hard. So, you know, Versolf and Magnar are two examples. The only other one that really does smack is Sir Nick. But, you know, he's a void legendary. So, heals all allies by 10% of this champion's max HP. So he's an HP based champion. He's going to need like Mountain King level base health here. To stand any chance of this guy being worthwhile. Because a 10% heal. Let's say he's got Mountain King health. You could probably pump him up to 100k health. That's still only a 10k heal. Sounds like it's a lot. And it is a decent heal. If you get to that level. But let's say he's more like a normal HP based champion. Let's say he's on. I don't know. 60k heal. Well a 6k heal. You know, being like one of the main parts of his kit, it's not that great. Uh, but you might get some more um, improvement from Bookage, honestly. Heals all allies under continuous heal by 15% instead. So you get an extra 5% heal there. And I'd imagine there'd probably be like a couple of bonuses to the healing. But generally, if it's like plus 5%, plus 5% in books, generally that will be a um, multipl multiplicative. I think I said that right instead of additive heal. So uh, let's say it adds up to 10% down here. The 10% becomes 10% of 10. So it goes up by 1%, not up by 10%. So you get, end up getting like an 11% heal. It's not a lot. So the book value is actually not a lot in, in those type of situations. So the A2 could smack, gives you a nice, nice heal. Yeah, that's, that's what we've got here. Uh, and then the A3... Uh, clan mentor removes all block this is so specific all block buff and heal reduction debuffs from all allies so i'm in my head i'm like which boss are they trying to set him up for whenever whenever they're making a champ i wish they'd just be like yeah look we're going to make him a specialist there but he can also be good there there and there yeah and i'm like who's putting block buffs and heal reduction on us that he's done a clean off like who's he's a specialist against I mean, I guess all of this is, is meant to be like a Hydra, Hydra champ. Because the healing you need, you know, cleansing off debuffs you need. But it just feels so weird to me. It feels like a very weird setup. So removes these two buffs from all allies. Then puts out two continuous heal buffs for two turns. It doesn't say you have to remove those two debuffs to get the heals. So it might just straight up give you two heals. Which is not bad, actually. Two continuous heals. Plus you get the bonus um, from the A2 kicking in at that point. It's not bad. Uh, it's on a four turn cooldown. Probably books to three. So again, not too bad. Um, also, another probably books to 100% chance of removing one random debuff. So that's probably the best part of that move for me. Like the amount of time you have block buffs on you or heal reduction on you is pretty scarce. When it is on you, it's annoying. Certainly both, both of them are quite annoying. Um, so being able to remove them is good and an extra debuff cleanse is good. I'll tell you what I'd rather have though from a legendary. A full cleanse and then my two heals please. Like don't give me these two. How many epics do a full cleanse and then give you something else? Legendaries generally do a full cleanse and give you something else. Like this feels very weak or very overly specific for a legendary champion to me. Uh, and we then, we then got this passive paternal. 
Each time a continuous heal buff heals an ally, fills that ally's turn meter by 5%. The old fives coming up again. So I guess like, if you're pairing with a Wither or a Bad L or a Eurogrim, or, you know, someone who's pumping out a bunch of continuous heals, you can start to rotate turn meter pretty quick. I guess him and a Wither the Crown against Hydra could be quite a good combo in terms of they would do enough to continuously heal you. He brings a bit of a cleanse and you're gaining turn meter fill. Um, that could work quite nice. But it's very specific that you need this and this to make this guy any good. I don't like that. Um, if there are multiple champions with a skill, only activates one. So look, there you go. A Pardon, Clan Father. Um, let's hope he is the worst fusion of 2022. Um, I always say that if, sometimes these fragment collectors are pretty easy to get. So I would hate to say don't go for him and then all of a sudden new content drops and it's like, damn, I wish I had that dude that did the remove block buffs and heal reduction. I can't see it, but then I was wrong about other ones in the past. So look, he feels weak to me. I'm not overly fussed about, um, you know, pushing hard to get him. Maybe it's time to have a rest month after a really busy Christmas period. Or if you're just like a completionist, which I know a lot of people are, and you want some of these cool looking champs, fine, go grab him. Go grab him. It'll be reasonably easy as long as you can do the two shard events, I would say. But there you go, guys. Not really a great one to start 2022 for me. I feel like he's straight up um, or straight down to the bottom of the, the cesspool of the weakest legendaries. Unless something crazy happens when you use his abilities that I'm not seeing. Uh, I guess comment below. What am I missed? What did I miss? Um, why is this guy actually going to be top class? If someone finds something which I've missed, great. I will pin that to the top and I'll be like, guys. And in fact... Go and read the pinned message in case I've pinned someone's message and I'm like, oh yeah, of course, I've missed that. Anyway, I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.